In this video, I'm going to talk about five top diseases that you really should be looking out for on your plant material. Now, I talk about herbaceous material, but there are plenty of other things that these diseases will actually attack. And I will let you know as I go through the different varieties. I may not cover everything, but they are there as a pointer for you to find out and to look at your plant material much more closely. I'm Rosie Hardy. This is Rosie Hardy Gardening. Let's look at mildew. Now, there are two different types of mildew. There is powdery mildew and downy mildew, and a lot of people get these confused. So we're going to start off with powdery mildew. This is something that looks like white powder all over the surface of the leaves. Sometimes it can be on the underside and also on the stems of plants as well. This affects a lot of the daisy family. So that includes your Michaelmas daisies, your asters, things like weeds. So things like dandelions and all of those things, they can all get powdery mildew. This is also something which is really prevalent in vegetables. So you need to be aware that it will attack vegetable crops as well. It'll attack roses, all sorts of things. So you need to look out for it. So a white dusty coating on stems and leaves on the surface and it just looks awful apart from anything else. It is a fungus. It won't actually kill the plant unless it's really badly infected. But what it does is it makes it unsightly. So you need to be removing any of the foliage that is bad. If it's really badly infected, the leaves can actually turn yellow and fall off. Those leaves you need to pick up. It's fine at the beginning of the year to actually put those leaves into your compost because the spores on there are not really, the spores are not going to survive that long in a heat composting. However, if you do it later in the year, it's better to bag it and bin it. Now, there is no real fungicide out there for powdery mildews. The fungicides and all of these things are becoming less and less. So really what you need to be doing is making sure your plants are healthy. And one of the key things is airflow. So if you're getting mildew inside a closed up tunnel or where you're producing vegetables or other crops, then make sure your ventilation is good. If you've got it inside a greenhouse as well, ventilation, ventilation is key for all of these things. Keep an eye on your plants as well. Make sure you check them over, take off any dead leaves straight away, get rid of them. Make sure there's nothing left around the base of the plant as well, because that's where leaves can fall, the spores fall onto the ground, They leave there and then they come back up again. Also, this is something that, you know, you could use SB Plant Invigorator. That is brilliant. That will really help your plants because the SB Plant Invigorator, it just boosts the natural immunity that a plant has itself. So it's something that is very, very good to actually do. So watering and feeding correctly, making sure your plants are in really good, healthy conditions do not plant too close together, especially if you're growing vegetables, make sure you thin out. So if you sow and you've sown a little bit too thickly, just thin out because that will really help, especially on things like chard or spinach, which can get it quite badly. So just be sure of that. Now it overwinters on soft green tissue. So say something that is still alive through the winter or you've got maybe some weedy material in there, it can overwinter like that, or it will overwinter on dead leaves and old leaves. So make sure you clean all of that. So what we're saying here is cleanliness, keeping a good airflow, and that should be absolutely fine. That is your powdery mildew. Now, when we go on to downy mildew, it's slightly different because it appears as blotches on the leaves. And it is basically on the surface or on the lower part of the leaf. And it really occurs in very wet, humid conditions. And it tends to just be tiny blotches 
and they're between the veins of the leaf. So that is something that you can watch out for. It's very prevalent on things like geums and aquilegias. It is also on a lot of vegetables. So do be aware of that. And it's not the easiest of the ones to actually do because you don't get so much of the white coloration that you do on the powdery mildew. Downy mildew is a little bit more difficult to see. It's got black spore and it really does not it's not that easy until the damage is already there to actually see it. So again, don't plant too closely. Don't water at night. Therefore, especially when you're inside a tunnel or you're inside a greenhouse, water in the morning because that way the leaf surface can dry out and you're not going to get uh, the conditions for this particular disease to take hold. So that is something to do. Also, if you do find you've got that, crop rotation. Don't grow the same things in the same place every time. This is always good. Crop rotation. It's the same if you grow con things in containers. Don't put them down on the ground or in the area that you always put them. Put them somewhere else. Rotate the plant and therefore any spore that's there, if it doesn't like that, plant's not going to go. And if you leave it long enough, a three-year rotation, you shouldn't get it back. So cleanliness again, airflow again, water in the morning, crop rotation for downy mildew. Another disease is botrytis or otherwise known as grey mould. And this is particularly uh, something that you don't want to get within your greenhouse or in your polytunnels, for instance, if you're growing crops like cucumbers or tomatoes, that type of thing, because they, botrytis tends to get into the plant material from wounds and you will suddenly see the end of your plant wilting and not realise and think, oh, perhaps it needs more water. Where in actual fact, it might have got damaged somewhere. And that wound can either be because you have been deleafing and you've gone and cut into the stem or an insect has actually been one of these um, sucking insects, so it could be aphid or something like that, has bitten in and created a little bit of a hole which you haven't noticed. The grey mould spores get in there and suddenly kill off the stem. It's very easy to spot because it does literally give you this grey mould all the way around and it is very prevalent on young, soft or older, soft growth. That's what it really likes. So if it gets a hold, you can cut it out. If it's right in at the base of a plant, absolutely no use whatsoever, get rid of it. Often in the uh, autumn and later time when you've got flowers going over, you will see this gray mold appearing on things like dead flower heads. But it's really bad if it gets into things like your raspberries and your strawberries because it will create a mould both on the actual fruit that is there, maybe ripening and it's got damaged and it will uh, cause problems. Also, it will then get onto the flowers, therefore you're not going to get any fruit. So just make sure that you keep cutting off anything that you see in the way of mould. Make sure you're keeping it clean. It is humidity that is the key thing with this. So low humidity is great. As soon as the humidity is really high inside a tunnel, outside, you can't control it outside, but you can control it inside. Ventilation, keeping it ventilated, that's really, really key. And again, the timing of when you water. So water in the morning, ventilate, and then you get much drier airflow within the tunnel space. That is key as well. Hygiene, just keep things clean. You know, tidy up when you take plant material out of your tunnels, then just sweep through, tidy it up, give it a disinfectant wash, absolutely fine. Give your pots a brush out. Just make sure that your tools are clean and they are all, if you use them for cutting off anything that's diseased, make sure you clean them afterwards. It's just these hygiene things which can help. And this is a lot of the key things with a lot of these diseases that water is your key element here that is either spreading it 
or helping it to keep going. So try not to have too humid an atmosphere, keep it well ventilated and that should be fine. And just cut out and remove any old and diseased stuff that you've got. Something else which is a bit more difficult to spot is bacterial leaf spot. Now this differs from fungal legions because they're more angular in how they are. They're also bonded between the veins. If it's a fungus, a fungus can run around all over the surface of your leaf and it can spread everywhere, both underneath it. The bacteria gets inside the leaf and it is bound by the veins within the leaf, which is why it is angular. And that is the reason that it looks different. Um, now, it can remain within the seeds, it can remain in debris in the soil, it can be in the roots, and it also can be in non-host plants so it can be in weeds so that's how it can overwinter so really the key thing with this is definitely good hygiene now if you see you've got bacterial leaf spot get rid of those leaves bag it and bin it do not put it into your compost because you don't want to spread it around elsewhere also be aware that watering overhead and leaf splash, so if you've got something which has got bacterial leaf spot, you're watering over the top, the small little droplets of water jump from one leaf to another plant to another plant, that can then spread this bacterial leaf spot around. So be aware, water into the pots only, don't try and water over the top, that's absolutely key. And again, it's a, one of these things whereby keep everything tidy. Once you have removed leaves and you've used a pair of secateurs or a pair of snips to actually, um, you know, deal with the problem, then make sure that you clean those snips before you go and use them on another plant. Because again, the bacteria can sit on the metal and be transferred over onto the next plant. So key thing here is very definitely hygiene when you've got bacterial leaf spot. Okay, the last one I'm going to do, this one is rust. Now, it's called rust because if you think of a rusty nail, you get that orange sort of colour initially on rust and then gradually it goes a different colour. Well, that's exactly what happens with plant rust. It can start one colour and it can go to being a slightly darker colour as it gets older or as the spores within the fungus actually change. And there are many plants that can have rust. It is not caused by iron oxide, which is what causes your rust on your metals. This is a fungus, and it's a fungus that basically attacks the undersurface of the actual leaves. So most people will walk past plants and not realize that they've actually got a rust on them. The rust happens um, and the spores are underneath and it can be orange or yellow initially. Uh, sometimes it can be white and then it will fade to go brown or black depending on the age of the pustules that are there. Sounds horrible, doesn't it? What you have to do is rather than just looking at the surface of the leaves of your plant, always turn them over and you will see them directly. If you see funny little pinprick yellow spots on the tops of leaves, turn them over immediately because that can be an indicator there's something worse happening underneath. And there it's very, very easy to spot. It's bright orange. And again, it's one of these spores which is carried in the airflow and very definitely carried by water and that sort of thing. So do watch out for it. Early summer into autumn is when this is very prevalent. Now, there are lots and lots of plants, as I said, that will get rust. It is on irises, it's on hollyhocks, it's on alliums, it's on hardy geraniums, heucheras, euphorbias, roses. Many trees and shrubs can also get rust as well. 
However, the rust is specific. So if you have a hollyhock that has rust, its rust is not going to infect your roses. It's not going to infect your alliums. If you have allium rust, so that is on say chives or your ornamental alliums, then that is specific to the allium family, but it will not infect your hollyhocks. So it's specific to the family, but also occasionally there can be another uh, host and that will be a weed host. So quite often things like senecio or groundsel will carry rust and that rust is then going to go on to perhaps a daisy or something like that. So remembering if you see you have got weeds that got rust, get rid of those as well. Now when the fungus spores are very, very young and just started off, they are quite weak and you can compost them. But once the season gets on and later, then don't compost it, bag it and bin it because that will keep it going. So you've got to make sure that you don't get too wet a leaf. Now, if the plants are outside that, you know, and it's wet and everything else, you can't really do a lot about that. But if you've got material inside, then make sure again, the leaves stay as dry as possible within that internal growing situation. So again, good ventilation, not watering above, watering down into the pots, keeping an eye on your plants, not just walking past them and thinking, oh, you, you look okay. Just have a look underneath, turn the leaves up, see what's happening there. As soon as you see it, cut that out because it doesn't just affect the leaves. You will see it happening on the stems. So do be aware that it can get onto the stems as well. Once it has that, you need to cut the plant down. Now, it's not really going to kill the plants, but it looks unsightly. So making sure your plants are well fed, in good condition, SB Invigorator can really help with this as well. And that is what you can do to control it. And don't plant the plants too close together. If you see you've got something that is always getting rust, then take that plant out and start again, but do not plant in the same place. So it's all about hygiene. It's all about looking at your plant material and remembering Diseases are not just on the surface, they can be underneath the leaves and they can be on the stems as well. Good vigilance and good looking at your plant material will always help. Thank you very much for watching and please do subscribe to the channel.